So, you've decided to play creative. You've been practicing those 1v1s for weeks now, and you think you've become a creative warrior with your newfound skills. So, what do you do next? You pop into a real competitive game such as Arena, and suddenly things aren't going exactly as you expected them to, huh? What gives? But your Chris Army, it is your boy, Keith Allen, back again to give you guys the latest tips and tricks to make you a better competitive Fortnite player. Today, we're going to be going over something many players go through when transitioning between creative and arena. This is that their performance on arena doesn't reflect their track record on creative. If you're experiencing this, then rest assured, my friend, that you're not alone. So today, we're going to teach you how you can take the skills that you learn while playing creative and apply them fully into the real competition. All right, guys, so the first thing that you need to understand is that while creative is a fantastic way to train your mechanical skills, it's a very different type of mode than arena. You know, in creative, you can learn to build faster, make edits, and engage in combat and train your aim. You know, there is an abundance of resources and workout routines that can help you out in this regard. However, it's only half of what you should be focusing on if you want to be a true competitive player. You know, arena is where you really get your hands dirty and there are major to subtle differences which won't come up during creative. Luckily, once you figure out what the differences are, you can train yourself to bring your newfound skills into the arena and ultimately the very tournaments that you want to make a name for yourself in. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like you could be playing better in your Fortnite games? Well, the truth is you're probably right you know everybody has the potential to play better including you you just might need to just push a little harder in the right direction which you can get from our team of world-class pro coaches they're gonna play with you in your games they're gonna guide you past all your mistakes so you can unlock your hidden fortnite potential all you need to do is click the link in the description to reach proguides.com all right guys so the first thing that you need to understand about creative mode is that ping does not work the same as an actual game of Fortnite. But like you might have a higher ping when playing an arena game and those differentials can really affect your speed. Even if you've never had trouble with ping before, there might be a slight delay in your actions which can throw off your game just enough to make you feel like you're not doing as good. In fact, you might even find yourself building on the wrong spot or just making wrong edits along the way. This is because your muscle memory has grown accustomed to playing on creative settings. The change in speed means that you're trying to pull off a build sooner than you should. When you try to aim you're gonna also find that you're not as accurate. You know, it doesn't mean that you're just settling bad at those mechanics. You just simply need to adjust and just let your muscle memory adapt to playing in real games. You know, the same can be said for FPS, which is higher on creative but lower in Battle Royale. Luckily, unlike ping, like FPS is something that you can control even on creative. So unless you're just, you know, packing the latest hardware, consider playing a few games of Battle Royale. Make sure to take notes on the frames that you're getting on that mode, then just set the FPS on creative to match. At least now you're gonna be playing on the same FPS, which is a step up from having to deal with a sudden FPS change and a ping difference. You know, okay, so one good tip for this is switching up your playstyle. You may have been able to just be a speed demon on creative, but just taking a step back and just using a more methodical approach can really help you transfer those skills much easier. Plus, with the mechanical skills that you picked up from creative, you can also become a cold and calculated eliminator. You know, items also play a big factor in how well you do in creative versus how well you do in arena. You know, one of the benefits of playing creative is that you can just gain access to some of those juicy legendary weapons right from the get-go. Okay, so once again, your memory begins to adjust to the different reload speeds and damage outputs. You may have trained your aim, but you're gonna still need to get accustomed to starting games with uncommon rare weapons. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to get your preferred weapons and have to make do with the weapon that you're unfamiliar with. The truth is, is that arena is not as fast paced as creative. Okay, so here you need to really just take time gathering building materials, looting, as well as rotating. You know, there's also the possibility that other players that you're gonna encounter will found epic loot or better inside the chest. Again, you know, this isn't about skill. Sometimes it's just about luck. However, you do need to focus on your own plan and really deal with these situations as they come. And so if you're a smart player, then you're gonna be able to climb up the ladder as the game progresses. The best solution for this is to have a loot route ready and practice landing. You aren't always guaranteed to get the best loot right away. However, knowing your loot route can ensure that you can get a decent enough inventory for you to really last to the end game. During that time, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to find better weapons, useful equipment, and enough building materials. You know, one of Fortnite's most iconic features is the storm, which really slowly covers the map as the match progresses. And so while this might seem like an afterthought to many players, getting too comfortable with creative can really result in you forgetting to check the timer. Suddenly, you find yourself being chased by the storm. 
and maybe it's even taking some points off your health in the process. However, the most damaging thing the storm can do is just shift your focus from competing to really just running away towards safety. You know, during this time, players might be waiting for any stragglers to come running through and just pick them off one by one. So if you're too focused on getting to safety, I mean, you might not notice the players around you. So remember to keep an eye out on that encounter and just make sure that you have a way of rotating to a new area if you need to. You know, one of the most fantastic things that you can do on creative is really work with an infinite amount of building materials. This is why it's so easy to learn and just edit and build. However, real games require you to gather building materials. While this sounds simple enough on paper, you also need to know where you can find and just keep track of how much you have at any given time. You know, in season eight's meta, an excellent place to really farm brick is at the crash sites. Here, and I mean like right here, you can find an abundance of stones that yield plenty of bricks for you to really use on your builds. Taking notes on you know, where you can find building materials can really help you plan out your loot route. Another example is the mini IO bases, which are proving to be a great place to really land and collect metal at. Like keeping track of locations like these can really help you guys fill up your materials inventory, but also just start you off on the right foot. So definitely consult with your loot route and just make sure that you're hitting the best spots. And that way, when the time comes to start making builds and edits, you can rest assured, man, that you have enough material to keep going. All right, guys, so the biggest difference between playing creative to train and arena matches is the players that you're going to encounter. You know, there are plenty of people out there who consider themselves creative legends. However, once you place them all into a match, suddenly it ceases to be a 1v1. Now that you're playing against an entire lobby of players crawling over each other for loot and kills and building materials, man, it changes everything. Even if you manage to engage with an opponent, there is still the possibility that a third player will see the two of you distracted and just take advantage of that to kill both of you. You know, different Different players also mean different skill levels. So finding a partner to go 1v1 in or playing with your friends can be a great way of training your aim or box fighting. However, I will say this, it could also be a crutch that makes you complacent with the skill levels that you're going up against. Eventually, those players are gonna take you as far as they can and you're gonna need to find bigger challenges to really keep you improving. So you might even become so accustomed to how your friends play that when a real encounter happens, suddenly they're gonna be pulling off moves that you didn't expect because your mind is still in those 1v1s against players you know well. So the best way to get you out of this funk is really to keep grinding arena and improve your spatial awareness. In fact, like grinding arena is honestly a good way to address all the other changes we've mentioned so far. Once you've mastered the mechanics, try dropping creative for a while and focus on those arena points. You might feel like getting into games is slower, but in the long run, it's gonna help your mind get accustomed to battle royale, as well as the constant updates to the map. All right, so now this next bit has nothing to do with your actual skill, but rather how your brain reacts to being in a higher stake situation, so important. Okay, so take for example, a real life scenario. You're doing a math problem on a sheet of paper, right? You can do fine there, but, but then you're called up to do the same thing in front of a crowd, in front of the entire class. And you might be thinking to yourself, gee, am I doing this right? Like this is because you can afford to make a few mistakes when you're performing a task on your own. And so there are no consequences. Same goes for creative guys. Like if you die on creative, you can often respawn back and just try again. So this is great for practicing your mechanical skills, but once you're in an actual game, you don't get to respawn back in. Once you die, you've lost. So to take matters worse, losing will actually cost you arena points once you've reached a certain skill tier. Suddenly, each time that you lose feels like your soul is being ripped apart piece by piece. Creative aside from being a place to train, it's also good for building confidence. And so if you're calling yourself a creative warrior, then the odds are you're feeling pretty good about your skills. And so the transition to arena can actually hurt your confidence. And this is gonna make you feel like you aren't as good as a player. Whether it be death by third party, you know, or, or you get eliminated by sniping or getting eliminated in the early game, it could just really take a toll. Yes, competitive is, well, competitive. And so you need to get in that mindset that you can outplay your opponent. You also need to stop thinking about all the bad things that could happen and instead focus on your current fight. You know, these are the things that you can control. And so once you've got your mind off the stakes, you can feel calm and collective enough to really use the skills you picked up to get that win. Bunch of girls saw me, that's gonna be it for today's video. Do you guys feel more prepared to go into creative and just really become a legend? Well, we sure hope so. Hey, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and connect to me on my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. Listen, man, we believe in you. Keep going, keep grinding, never quit. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.